Hey, thanks for clicking on this video. I know you have lots of choices here on the crazy internet, and thanks for picking this one. We're gonna do things you should know when you're record collecting and some tips. Uh, lots of videos out there, lots of great information. Uh, hopefully I'm gonna cover a few things that you haven't already seen or heard before. First thing would be the shelving. Uh, a lot of people, of course, you're gonna buy records, you're gonna buy lots of records. Um, way back when, when I was a kid, I had enough that I would have these uh, milk crates, these plastic milk crates, and I would have two crates filled up. And I had that pretty much through uh, my uh, grade school and uh, early high school years. Thanks, Kitty, for making an appearance. You're not getting paid. And then after that, obviously, you need shelves and shelves and shelves. So I see a lot of people today, they get into the hobby. Uh, they purchase their Crosley or their suitcase kind of turntable. And then these, these little stores, sometimes even like a hipster kind of clothing store, will have a turntable and some things for sale. They'll have these expensive LP shelves and stuff like that. We don't really need that stuff. Uh, a lot of people, they also purchase the cube shelving from uh, Ikea. And again, if that's something you like, great. For me, 29 bucks at uh, Menards, be the same like Home Depot, Lowe's, all that kind of stuff. You get these hardware shelving. These will hold 400 pounds a shelf. So you can fill them up with LPs. It, you won't even see them move. They're just awesome shelves. Um, the only problem is, is obviously they're not built for LPs, so you do have to fill in. So I just fill cardboard right here, and that helps the albums, of course, not fall. So these heavy-duty shelves are going to last me a lifetime. Um, and they a few inches from the ground, so they keep off the floor. Another important thing is the room. You want to keep them in a good room. Uh, ideally, in this house, I would want to keep them on the main floor upstairs, but we just have no room up there. Uh, so I'm down here, um, but what I have is this little climate thing tells me how cold it is. I like to keep it, well, it usually is naturally a little colder down here, which is fine. I'd rather have it be a little colder than hotter. Uh, and it's 32% humidity. Um, sometimes it gets a little drier than that. Um, I do have a dehumidifier, so that way I can keep it. Um, I don't care if it's a little dry, but I for sure don't want that humidity to go up. You always want to keep your uh, LPs in a good, good room temp. What you do is you want to stay away from shelves that have these pegs. And the reason being is that as the album's way down that shelf, it's gonna pull that shelf away from the sides a little bit. And I've seen shelves come off of these pegs and fall and collapse and you could crack your LPs or, or ruin part of your collection that way. So you don't really wanna rely on little pegs like this to hold up because your LPs are gonna start, as you collect more, and obviously they're gonna weigh more and more and more. So you wanna get a nice, strong, supporting shelf uh, for your collection. Another thing that seems really simple is how do you open up your LP? Let's say you bought something new, obviously, although I have seen stores shrink wrap uh, used albums. They must have had a shrink wrap for seeing and just went back there to use them. But, uh, so this is from 1979. It's never been opened. Uh, still in the shrink. Uh, if you watch my videos, you'll see that I picked this up at a haul uh, just last week. A way that I found is good. Let's say that you're a collector and you really wanted to keep it in the shrink. Um, you want to open it to play it, but you want, to, you want to keep it in the shrink. And we'll get more about the shrink in a little bit. What I do is I take a tack, a thumb tack, right? I go right up to the top, and you just start splitting it. You can go all the way down, right? So then that will create a nice cut, and you can pull your album out and all that. Another way, I think these are like sewing scissors or scissors for your fingernails if you want. You could take that, open that blade up. And again, go right along that top. Go all the way down. Careful not to push, press in too much because there's inner sleeve in there, obviously. When you get the majority of it, you can just kind of take your finger like that. And that way, because when I was a kid, I'd always ruin uh, the shrink wrap because I would open up a little bit and kind of tear it and try just to tear it along that side. And it would always tear into the actual, oh, and, and then you pretty much, you might as well take the shrink wrap off at that point. So there you go, you got your, Ah, oh, smells like the 70s and 80s in here. Uh, so this 1979 opened for the first time. Yeah, beautiful record, all ready to play. Can't play it now because, you know, music, copyright things, stuff like that. So a lot of people, and myself included the last few years, uh, I will take the album out of the shrink wrap and put it in a three mil sleeve. I've used one mil and two mils and they just seem to tear all the time at the end. But a good th three mil, you can kind of put it in and out of your collection, pull it in and out, and three mil usually always holds up. Uh, so because there's no hype stickers on this thing or anything like that, uh, and I know it's, it's gonna be fine inside this three mil, I would just take the shrink wrap off. I know some people love to keep the shrink wrap on, 
but I have no problem just taking it off because I know it's still going to be protected. Now the reason why you'd want to take a shrink wrap off is I don't know if you know it's not. If I hold it up, you can kind of see it curving a little bit. Some of the times, sometimes the shrink wrap has uh, a tendency to pull on your album. So it'll pull it and it'll kind of not really warp the actual album inside, but it'll warp the cover a little bit if it's pulling out too much. Sometimes the shrink wrap is, is loose and it's fine. But, some, but I find that the majority of time, especially with older albums, uh, if they're still in their shrink wrap, you'll see, I don't know, because of the humidity level, humidity level or what, uh, but they'll start the curve and all that. So this way it kind of frees them up and then you can put them in their own little little three mil sleeve. This is a used three mil sleeve, so it's not as clear as uh, a new one would be, obviously. So there you go. Pat is now protected forever. Like I said, sometimes the shrink wrap is not pulling on this album. This album is, you can tell, but it's pretty much straight. So I've always had the shrink wrap on it. It's never really pulled on it. I have uh, cut a little bit of the shrink wrap on the sides, so it's not pulling as much. So you can do that. Or, like I said, if you, you're worried about that hype sticker, uh, you just, this is an example. Uh, I had the shrink wrap on it, but then for this video I said, oh, let's, let's use the hype sticker as an example. You can just cut that hype sticker out, all right? la di da di da Hype stickers tell you what, what the good songs are, right? And then you take your shrink wrap off that's pulling your your cover a little bit, it's tending it to bend. No more shrink wrap on you. Of course you want to protect it, so you take that hype sticker with your LP and you just put it in a nice a cleaner three mil protective sleeve. You can go, oh yeah, those were the hits back then. This is this record was jamming. 88. You don't know what it's got till it's gone. Also new records. This is a two mil sleeve, so you can see sometimes the two mil just isn't strong enough, doesn't really hold up, so it's ripped a little bit at the corner. But again, take the hype sticker off and put it inside the sleeve. Now the biggest thing is purchasing records. Uh, record store day is very popular, and a lot of people like to get those releases. If you aren't lucky enough to be in the front of the line to get those releases, everyone then jumps on their phone and tries to score them on eBay. I would tell people, any of these albums we could live without. It's just a choice to have them. We, we all get obsessed, but try not to be that obsessed and wait six months or even a year. And you're going to find 90% of the times on a, a RSD release, everyone's like, no, it gets... It's worth so much more because they're choosing the few that, that jump up. But your average record store day release is either going to sit at that same price once people feel like they have to own it and all that. You just wait six months to a year and then you check out and I guarantee you're probably going to find it for even, sometimes even cheaper than the original price that it was in that store for. So don't always feel like you're at the store, the person in line in front of you has that last copy, you need to jump on eBay. People are pretty crazy on eBay now, just jacking up the price like crazy. Um, now, there are some releases like uh, last year, or uh, was it two years ago, or was it last year? I can't even remember anymore. Skid Row, uh, Slave to the Grind came out on LP again, and they had this big out, and that's still sitting at around $100, uh, $80 to $100, um, even after a while after it's released. So there are some releases that are obviously going to, and there are some that are just going to go astronomical. But if you wait long enough, stuff usually drops. Now, in that, along those lines, this I'll give you this tip. Uh, so Black Sabbath, everyone knows Black Sabbath. Uh, this dehumanizer is the one that uh, came out in 1992. So here in the States, we really weren't pumping out a lot of LPs in 92. CDs were the main thing. Uh, so that's why a lot of um, uh, Alice in Chains, Soundgarden, that early Seattle era around that alternative music stuff is a little more expensive on LP if you want original press because they weren't pressing a lot. They were pressing a lot of CDs. So they repressed this in 2019. I didn't hear about it. I think they didn't. They would have called. Black Sabbath should have called me and told me they were repressed this. They didn't. I saw like six months ago that they had repressed it. I always wanted to check it out. So I thought, well, my two options are one option is eBay. I looked on eBay and it was like 35 to 45 and I went to uh, Discogs where we all 
go-to. Um, and I was also around 35 or more, and I was like, man, I really want to get it. Don't think those are your only two options. You know, every, uh, well, not every store, because a lot of the stores I go to actually around here, they don't put their albums online, or if they do, there's only a few of them. There's only a few stores that I go to around here that really have a good online site. But anyway, here's a little tip. So I went to the Record Store Day website, and I clicked on Participating Stores. And I just picked a state. I'm here in Illinois, but for some reason I picked Michigan. And on the third store of the list of participating stores, they were all small independent stores, the third store had a, um, had a lot of their albums online. And one of the albums they had was this one. It was on, not on Clarence, but I think they were, they were having a sale at the time. So it was $22. So, and that included shipping and handling. So $22. So I saved a good 12, 13, 14, just by looking around. So don't always think that every album you're gonna purchase is on those two sites. There's lots of stores out there that have uh, web pages. And usually if you purchase for them and join their email list, they'll put you on like a 10% off thing or something like that. Well, I hope some of these tips make sense. I hope you can use some of them and it'll improve your uh, record collecting experience and save you some cash and save you some heartaches. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, all that hoo-ha, and I will uh, be back again real soon with another music-type video. Thanks for watching.